just when I thought I had run out of new secrets to find within Control, I came across some information that created a whole new rabbit trail of inquiry. If you were like me, then you probably read the title of this video and was confused. I couldn't remember anyone named Chester in my playthrough. However, when scrolling through Reddit one day, I came across a thread discussing the relevance of the initially unknown character, Chester Bless. After doing some research, I realized I missed something big. As such, I want to give full credit for this information to the members of the Control Reddit community that initially pieced this information together. This video will be done in a slightly different fashion by presenting the clues about this mysterious figure and connecting the dots. So let's start at the beginning and piece together this mystery. Even though the name Chester Bless is only mentioned once in the entire game, the fingerprints of this individual are scattered throughout the main campaign and the Foundation DLC. In 1994, a nationwide speaking tour named The Power of the Board became popularized. This was advertised as a self-help course created and operated by Chester Bless. Altered Item 43, the Guru Surfboard, was advertised as a miracle worker that would drastically increase the personal drive of anyone who touched it. As these events grew more popular, the FBC took action and raided the home of Chester Bless located in Los Angeles. Upon entering, however, the man had vanished, leaving the surfboard out in the open for them. On July 4th, 1994, the altered item was taken into Bureau custody. This is the one time his name is mentioned directly, but his influence can be seen all throughout the Bureau's case files and records. The Guru surfboard was estimated to originate in the 1960s due to the model and design. So let's go back in time a bit and see if we can isolate any more clues. In 1968, an unreleased western movie was being filmed on the island of Sardinia in Italy. After a cast member was killed during an onset accident, production was cancelled and the equipment from the shoot was sold at an auction. 48 years later, a mailman from an unknown Arkansas town was hospitalized from dog attacks and claimed the incident was caused by a movie camera that was being shipped in the mail truck. At the end of the route, altered item 80, the Action Max camera, was discovered in a vacant warehouse. The return address on the package was for a P.O. box in San Fernando that was registered to a film studio named Blessed Pictures. Brian Hennerman, who ran a film review podcast, came across a VHS film entitled Delivery Disaster that was believed to have been filmed on the Action Max camera. Within it, a mailman was driving down the road and being pursued by what Brian referred to as hellhounds. The worker was unable to escape the rabid dogs, even in the vehicle, and was seriously injured during the event. Throughout the experience, the mailman kept looking back to shout at the camera. The film was confirmed by Brian to have been produced by the very same film company that shipped the Action Max camera in the first place, Blessed Pictures. After finding it on September 14, 2016, the altered item was brought back to the oldest house for safekeeping. The odd thing is that in 1968, the same year the film camera was sold at auction, the P.O. box in San Fernando that was registered to Blessed Pictures was opened as well. This was confirmed from local post office records. With this information, we can surmise that the people behind Blessed Pictures were the ones to purchase the altered item at the auction. This, however, was not the only time Blessed Pictures was noted by the FBC. During the America Overnight episode 382, a fondue set was mailed into the studio along with an envelope that contained a letter and cremated remains. It says, Dear America Overnight, I have the most wonderful appliance for your listeners. It is a miracle of God. A fondue set. A fountain. A blessed gift. Blessed is spelled with a capital B. This resulted in the death of the show's producer, Karen Harris, and the fondue set being sent to the FBC satellite facility for evaluation. 
The package was later traced back through the mail service to the very same P.O. box in San Fernando that was registered to Blessed Pictures. As a result of this event, case number 13-HQ-612 was reopened by the investigation sector to further look into Blessed Pictures. Before tying together this information, there is one more piece of evidence from the FPC case files that gives us a new thread in this mystery. In 1988, a group of patrons and employees at the Texas Roadhouse Diner reported being transported to an unknown location that was described as a tropical beach. This experience lasted the duration of the song that was playing on the diner's jukebox. This turned out to be Object of Power 10, the Song Master Jukebox, that was later relocated to a subroom off of Central Executive. After interviewing the diner's owner, it was discovered that the songs within the jukebox were changed out the day before the event. The company that was called in to maintain the jukebox was called Blessed Repair and Service. Investigators were unable to find any company by that name operating within the state. An investigation order was sent out to have any information related to Blessed Repair and Service be directed to the head of the investigation sector. Now that we have gone through Bureau records, the common thread here is apparent. Both Blessed Pictures and Blessed Repair Service appear to be companies that act as a front for the mysterious Chester Bless. Before Blessed Repair Service changed the records in the jukebox, there was no altered effect. It seems this company was responsible for the altered world event. They shipped the Action Max camera under the DBA of Blessed Pictures and mailed the fondue set from the same address. This fondue set was referred to by the writer as a miracle of God, a blessed gift. The words in the letter tell the host to dive on in and that the fountain is perfect for meat. Upon looking for Karen, the host only finds Ash in the production booth. I could only assume that Karen tested out the fondue set and was incinerated on the spot. All of this goes back to Chester Bless. Is it possible he was aware that America Overnight was used as a front for the FBC and the altered item was sent to them as either a warning or a way to silence the radio broadcast? Did Blessed Repairs and Service create an object of power when they replaced the records in the jukebox? Upon bringing the Songmaster back to the Bureau, it began to link to the formation within the quarry threshold. Was this ultimately intentional, and was the Guru surfboard another creation of this individual? What we know is that this man has been around for a while, and has knowledge of altered world events, and even has caused a few of them. So who exactly is Chester Bless? There is one last set of clues that can give us a theory. The tune that is being played within the Songmaster jukebox is called A Song for the Others. It seems like a curious title considering that after removing the existing songs, this is the one Blessed Repair and Services intentionally placed into the jukebox and is the only one in it to this day. It is the song that turned the jukebox from an everyday object into an object of power. If the song is for them, then who are the others? If we remember back to the national speaking tour that Chester Bless organized around the Guru surfboard, the event itself was called the Power of the Board. This is very likely a play on words referring not to the surfboard, but THE board itself. We know the board is involved in altered items and objects of power. Was Bless acting to make people believe in the power of the board? injecting this concept into the collective consciousness of the masses. We know that urban legends play a role in the creation of altered materials. What if Chester Bless was influencing this collective belief? We can assume from this that Bless has a connection to the board. Luckily, we have proof that he does in the board hotline entitled Objects of Power. Objects of Power are holders slash 665 to the other slash blessing we hold the reins slash law. We are failing in translating hyperreal concepts. Secrets slash instructions will be lost. Ignore this message. This is what brings everything together. 
even though the board feels that they are not able to translate hyperreal concepts and instructs Jesse to ignore the message, I believe they told us everything we need to know. If we take what they say as literal, objects of power hold the blessing and the board is responsible for controlling the reins of these objects, maintaining the law for the other. Is it possible that the blessing is the power that allows these objects to behave the way they do? Is Chester Bless the source of all altered items and OOPs, literally the blessing that gives them their power? Without further information, it is hard to say, but in the report for Altered Item 12, the VHS cassette tape, there is a classification for Entity A-001 that referred to Ati. I wonder if Chester Bless is a similar unknown entity that has yet to be officially put on the Bureau's radar. When looking up the official description for the yet-to-be-released AWE DLC, this is what we find. AWE will take Jesse into a new part of the oldest house, the Investigation Sector, where the Bureau closely examines altered world events. All the information we have just discussed related to Chester Bless, Blessed Pictures, and Blessed Repair and Services was sent to the Investigation Sector and can be considered a series of cold cases that have yet to be linked. Now that this sector is being opened to the new director and her management team, all the information needed to get to the bottom of this mystery is currently gathering dust in the investigation sector, waiting for a fresh set of eyes to put the pieces together. <laughs>